Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And also check out our Patreon page. I'll put a link below. On Patreon, you're going to get the ability to get exclusive content, reviews that haven't been released yet, and also a discount code for 15% off of everything in our online web store. Hi, I'm Mike, owner of The InGroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm going to do a new arrival video. This is for the week of July 24th, 2020. Don't forget all of this stuff can be purchased online at our website at www.theingroove.com. First, I want to start with a few things. The analog productions titles that were scheduled at the end of July got pushed back to the end of August, August 28th. That was the 33 RPM of the Getz Galbardo and the Louis Armstrong title. Uh, last week I showed you guys the Art Blakey Just Coolin'. That was one of the absolute best-selling titles we've ever had in a week. Uh, I've got more of those coming. They should be on the website Thursday and Friday. I'm pretty sure they're quite hard to come by right now. They're sold out at a lot of places. But I'll have those on the website. David Bowie's Tin Machine was supposed to be here last week. Uh, the distributor never sent the order. So we got delayed a week. I'm actually going to have them in my possession Thursday when you're watching this video. They'll be on the website at the end of the day. Uh, check back. You know, those have gone up in value quite a bit. But you'll be able to get them from the website on the cheap. The PJ Harvey dry and dry demos was supposed to be here on today's order. UPS didn't bring it. There's some people that pre-ordered it. It'll be here on Friday. Everybody will get their pre-order shipped out on Friday, and also it'll be on the website available to order on, the, on Friday. Also, I did a video a while back of the top 10 analog rock records that are in print that you should own. Almost all of them have been out of stock, but I was able to find some more Neil Young harvest. I've kind of gotten lucky because some distributors have been closed for a while, and when they reopen back up, I'm able to get some of their stock that hasn't moved in a while. And that's kind of the case with the Neil Young. So I'll have some more of those Neil Young Harvest titles. Not a ton of them, but they'll actually be in the system Friday on the website towards maybe 5 or 6 o'clock my time. Keep in mind, we're on the West Coast. But yeah, hard to get. I don't know of any place in the United States you can actually get that unless you go to like eBay or on the secondary market. Mobile Fidelity released a new SACD, Johnny Cash, I Walk the Line. Now, they only are doing 2,500 of these, but I'm actually going to probably take one of these home and give it a listen because they're doing it on vinyl. They're doing a double disc, 45 RPM version of this, and I'm kind of curious how it sounds. So I'll take the SACD home and give it a listen. But yeah, also I'm going to have, last week I told you guys the Rough and Rowdy, Bob Dylan import that I got. Most of them are destroyed. There's a few pre-orders that I'm waiting to fill. I'm actually going to get a restock of that later on this week. The pre-orders are going to get filled first, of course. There'll be a few extras left over. They'll be on the website on Friday, you know, and that's it. That's actually, from what I believe, a deleted SKU. So once those are kind of sold out, I don't know if that's going to be reorderable. But yeah. So the other day, I'm sitting at home listening to some tunes, answering emails, and I put on one of my favorite records, Paul Simon's Graceline. This was done all analog. I think it came out in 2012. It was done from the original master tape, pressed at RTI, nice thick 180 gram vinyl. Man, what a absolutely fantastic record. I'm like, man, this would be a killer title for that best analog list that you know I do but you know this record is eight years old it turns out this record is still in print and if you don't have this particular version it's actually the 25th anniversary version comes with a poster comes with a download card that more than likely doesn't work has three bonus songs though but maybe it works I don't know normally there's time frame on those but yeah unbelievably killer sounding record and it was a record that was recorded extremely good Awesome record, you know, I, you know, I would imagine if you were alive in the 80s, this was just nonstop on the radio relentlessly. I remember growing up in the 90s, this was still being played relentlessly on the radio, but this is an amazing sounding record. So I'm going to add this to the website to, you know, I've, I've done a little banner, the 100 best 
analog records that are in print that you should own. I think there's less than 40 on there. And the reason I haven't added more is because there's nothing in print. I could fill it up with the 100 best analog records that are in print that you should own, but everything will be out of stock awaiting repress. These manufacturers having, are having a major time getting stuff in, you know, keeping it in stock. There's so little as far as audiophile records out there that when something hits the market, it gets sucked up immediately and there's no more out there. Kind of prime example, this Bob Dylan that I told you guys about last week that I was supposed to have, but didn't come in until this week. But it sold out everywhere you go. I've got a few copies left, but they did 4,000 of these. This is, in my opinion, one of Bob Dylan's best records probably in the last 30 years, maybe 40 years. This is a really good record. 45 RPM. I enjoyed it. I also got a restock of the Pat Garrett. This is one guys don't sleep on. They made 3,000 of them. And this is number 1701. So we're already getting up there towards the end of the print run. Again, don't sleep on it. It's going to be pretty good value-wise in the future. So I got an email from my distributor and said, you got to Take this reissue, you know, this release real serious. This thing is going to be super, super desirable. Get your order in immediately. You wait 10 minutes, you're not going to get it. You know, one of those things. And I'm like, oh my God, what is this? You know, you, they make it sound like it's the next Adele album coming out. So I look at it and, I'm, you know, 100 Gex presents 1,000 Gex in the tree, clue, tree of Clues. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, I go online and I look at Discogs, you know, kind of checking out the secondary market. What are, what's any of their other stuff work? Why, why would this be so hot? Why would this so, be just so desirable? So I look and they released, this is their second album. They released another album uh, last year, maybe the end of 2019. It's like a $350 record. I'm like, holy cow, that's expensive. It's just some things are released really limited. Frank Ocean. Records are going for like, you know, Blonde is like a thousand fifteen hundred dollar record. That was a record store they released a few years back. I think it was exclusive to his website. Maybe they did fifteen hundred, but goes for insane money. But I was curious, you know, you don't see a lot of records that have come out in the last, you know, year that were under thirty bucks that go for ten times the value now. But this is one of them. Now I this is the ghostly green edition. It's a really killer looking record the design they did with it but I listened to it and yeah this is not for me at all this is geared to a different audience but uh, there was one tune that was kind of catchy but uh, you know I try to be open-minded but it's a little bit musically all over the place there's a little rap there's a little electronic a little bubblegum pop it's a little all over the place but I'm limiting you can only get one of these because on eBay they're already going for 60 70 bucks $80. I've seen people pay $100 for it and I've got it for $27.99. So don't order more than one because I'll cancel your order. I want to try to get, you know, for those fans out there of 100 gigs, I want to give you guys an opportunity to get it for a reasonable price. Kraft is doing a limited edition picture disc of Vince Guaraldi Trio doing, uh, you know, penis, Peanuts Greatest Hits. This is numbered to 2500 Oranzi Pazuzu. I have no clue what this is. It's on Nuclear Blast, limited to a thousand on Swamp Green and Mustard Splatter Vinyl. More than likely like a doom metal band. Spoon, Telefono. This is their debut album. I guess it's back in print for the first time since 1996. Recut from the original masters. The original masters could be a digital file. The original masters could be a tape. They do not specify. Baba Ali, The House. Looks more like an EP than an album. Four tracks, about five minutes a track or less. Rare Groove, Oriental Rare Groove and Rare Funky Sounds from the Arabic World. Uh, I'm a big fan of funk world music you know when you're listening to music for eight hours a day in a store and then you go home and you listen for a couple more hours you really got to expand your horizons to listen to new stuff otherwise you're going to get burnt out so i find myself listening to a lot of funk 
from around the world. The original motion picture soundtrack of Clover. This is a picture disc. That's a really cool packaging. It is like a die cut Clover. And then the picture disc is uh, see through. I have not seen the movie. New album by The Naked and Famous, Recover. I think this is probably the one of the hotter releases this uh, this week. Roddy Rich, please excuse me for being antisocial. All right. Turnover, Magnolia. Do not know what that is. Yeah, this is uh, looks like just a restock that got put in the wrong pile. Testament. Titans of Creation, but now this is weird. This is limited to 1100. That is a really strange number to be limited to, but this is on clear blue and orange splattered vinyl. Probably looks pretty cool on Nuclear Blast. It's unfortunate if you're into colored vinyl and you're not into metal, not good because the absolute coolest looking colored vinyl all happens to be on mostly doom metal. That's <laughs> They've got that market down. Neck deep, all distortions. The coolest vinyl I've seen has always been doom metal. African rare groove. Rare funky songs from Africa. And again, these comps are great because, you know, if you're collecting this stuff, original records, if it's like a mediocre Nigerian record and it's beat up in like VG shape and it's just an okay record, maybe there's a couple of really good tracks on it, it's like a thousand dollar record. If it's like a cooker and it's a real good record from front to back, they're like $5,000 records. So, I mean, the, some of the most expensive records you're going to find are going to be R&B funk oriented records from, you know, Nigeria, for instance. That stuff just goes for an absolute ton of money and you never find it better than VG. So it's always pretty beat when you find it. You know, a VG record for them is like near mint. You know, finding a VG plus record out of Nigeria is like absolutely impossible. Metal Meat. The Songs of the Dying Dog, New Residence Record, Double Disc. Restock from last week, Level Terrace Apart. New Diana Ross, Supertonic Mixes on Clear Vinyl. This is a, looks like a remix album. This is actually a new title from ORG. Big Bill Bronzy. This is a live show from 1957. It's actually done from the original analog master tape. This was cut by Dave Gardner at Infrasonic Mastering. Yeah, ORG, a label that I talk about a lot here on the channel. Most of what they do is actually analog from the original tape. Most of it's actually cut by Bernie Grunman. He tends to do most of their stuff. This is a uh, ST... R F K R future past life. Greg Gaffins Graffins long out of print solo album from 1997. Music on vinyls except hot and slow. This is on. Silver and red marble, numbered to 2,500 copies. Music on vinyl. Barbara Lynn, fantastic R&B guitarist. If you go, check this out. If you go on YouTube, there was a show called The Beat. It's with like four exclamation points at the end. It was recorded in Nashville, Tennessee, and it was broadcast into Texas. And there's an episode that she's on there playing guitar, and she's doing a cover of... Ray Charles, What I Say, that is just absolutely funky. That whole show is amazing. It's an amazing, like, musical variety show from the 60s. Otis Redding, I mean, it's just had the hoo-hoo of the, you know, in the R&B world on this show, and it was in color, and it's absolutely fantastic. But I really like Barbara Lynn. Check out that video. This is a Run Out Groove record. I've talked about them a lot on the channel. Run Out Groove, everything they do is numbered. Uh, it's a one-shot deal. They generally do pre-orders once they've sold out, or they do pre-orders, and they typically print on demand. So if 1,742 get printed, 
are ordered, that's how many they print. I'm sure this has been a long time coming for a lot of folks. The new Little Wayne album, Funeral. Hotly anticipated, I'm sure. It actually looks really, really high quality. This is how records should be done. It is a trifold, nice foil cover. It looks well made. I unfortunately uh, won't be buying this, uh, but this could be, you know, this could be a good thing for you folks who actually want to get your hands on a copy. You have less competition because I'm not going to be taking one home. So yeah, really cool though as far as quality goes, putting that out. This was just reissued on blue vinyl, kind of a special limited run. It was out of print. Black Sabbath's the end. It's their final concert. This is actually pretty cool. This was supposed to be a record store day release. This is You Gotta Have Soul. Raw, Sonoran, R&B, and Funk, 1957 to 71. 1957 to 71. This is a sampler, essentially, from the Audio Recorders Archives, who is put, you know, this was done, liner notes, everything was done by Johnny Dew, who owns the archive, who probably no doubt sat in his underwear and licensed this off to uh, my competition so they could have a record to do uh, for Record Store Day. But it never came out for Record Store Day. This was pulled. They wanted to get it to market quicker. They did 250 of them. This is on Arizona Sunset Vinyl. Some good tracks on here. I've reissued a few 45s. The first one I ever did was Chuck Womack and the uh, Sweet Soul, Ham, Hocks, and Beans. Really, really, really funky track. Uh, it was on Ramco originally, super rare. There's maybe five or six of them known to exist. Really, really cool, funky track. You know, Arizona is not known for great soul and funk, but we actually had a lot of killer tracks come out of the desert, which is pretty impressive considering in the 60s, this was a uh, this was definitely a country town, that era. But, you know, we had, we had a soul scene. We had Broadway, you know, you had Dyke and the Blazers. You know, they got big in Arizona with funky Broadway. Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty cool comp. Ham Hocks and Beans, part one and two, like I said, I issued that that is on here. Part two is actually just the instrumental of it. But yeah, pretty cool, good Arizona comp. If you're not familiar with uh, some of the soul that come out of the desert, good comp. Joy Division. This is live in Paris, 1979, limited to 500 copies. I don't know if this is a broadcast or what the deal is with this. Not sure of the sound quality on that particular record. Pretty Things, 1964 to 1967, BBC, colored wax. Another Joy Division, live at Town Hall, 1980. Don't know the sound quality of that either. Another broadcast are legally licensed or legally non-licensed boot. The Yardbirds, BBC Sessions, 1965 to 67. The vinyl on these are actually really cool. The tri-vinyl. This is not the best sounding Led Zeppelin show, but this is live at Fillmore West in San Francisco, 1969. Uh, I think this was from the very first tour they did of the States. They did like a little mini tour. Cream, BBC, 66 to 67. Some more Joy Division, live, 1980. One of my absolute favorite bands. New Order as well. Deep Purple, BBC Sessions, 1968 to 1969. I mean, the vinyl is super, super cool. This is actually musically a fantastic show. Black Sabbath, California Jam. This is the Ontario Speedway, 1974. This was a U.S. simulcast. So the sound quality, I would imagine, would be pretty good for, you know, for a broadcast. Jimi Hendrix Experience. This is BB Session number, Session 1, 1967. And there's actually a second disc that goes with it, 1967, Session 2 and 1. 
All right, another Black Sabbath, Masters of the Grave. Purple Vinyl. Rolling Stones, BBC Session, 1963 to 1965. So this is something that I showed a couple weeks back. I only got a few copies. I think they did 500 of these. They were real limited. I got a few more, but this is the Pink Floyd BBC Sessions. They did 1967, 1968, and 1969. It's kind of like a trio. But yeah, those are, got some more. And uh, yeah. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And until next time.